Hey everybody, Jeff Harmon, phototacklepodcast.com, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to tell you all about the Lightroom Previews.LR data folder, why Lightroom Classic uses it and builds that folder. I'm going to show you what you can do to control the space that it uses on your hard drive, and I'm going to show you what happens if you delete it. This has been a really common question I get from a lot of listeners. People want to understand what is this folder, and mostly they find it because they are really worried about hard drive space. Here in 2020 and a lot of computers, a lot of us have SSD drives that are pretty small where we're putting our catalog file. And as you go to look through it, you're like, what is this really big, almost 55 gigabyte folder that there is in next to my catalog file? This Lightroom Previews.LR data folder. What is this? And why is it so big? This was about 20% of a 256 gigabyte SSD drive, a very common size of SSD drive on computers here in 2020 if you're using Lightroom Classic. Now, not everyone is gonna get folders that are this large for these previews because it depends on like how long you've been using Lightroom, how many photos you've got, how much time you've spent in the library module, and I think you'll understand it. But in this particular case, this is a catalog I started back in 2013, and I have, I'll show you over, oops, over here, <laughs> there we go, 114,956 images that are in this catalog. And if I come over here, you can see 94,677 uh, previews are in this folder. So what is this? This is, as you use Lightroom Classic and you spend time in the library module, going through your photos, your images, it has to build previews for things to look right. So let, let me show you what, what I'm talking about. Here we are in Lightroom. I'm gonna switch to the grid view just to show you that, and I hit the G key to get to the grid view. You can switch between views here in the lower left. There's G for grid, E for loop, and loop view is a, a really helpful and powerful kind of way to be able to see things in Lightroom too. But here we are in the grid view, and you can see as I'm scrolling through, I can see all of the images from my shoot, and I'm also, Lightroom is showing me not only the images, but it's showing me an accurate picture of what the adjustments look like with those previews. What, uh, if I've made changes to exposure, you'll see in a second when I delete the folder, how it changes so that it doesn't look right. This is, when I'm in the grid view, it's using the standard previews, and I'm sure you're familiar with those as you've built or imported photos into Lightroom. It's using standard previews. Also down here in the film strip, it's kind of the same thing. It's showing me a much smaller version of those images, but it has the previews it needs to be able to show me an accurate uh, depiction of all of the adjustments that have been applied to my images as I'm doing. It goes really, really fast because those previews are all there in that module. If I hit e, e key for loop view, or you can click on this little box down here, I see the entire screen of this image and what is going on there. And if I go to, let's, let's try an image like right here. If I click in on the image in loop view, you can see it's kind of blurry. Hopefully you can in YouTube. It's a little bit blurry. There's not a lot of detail that's there. And now after the loading screen that was right down here goes away, it has more detail in the image. And that's because the one-to-one -one preview for this image was not built. So Lightroom had to go, Classic had to go build that preview really fast to be able to show me an accurate picture of what it is that was in this image. So the previews that were needing to be built while we're here in the library module, that is what's going on with this L, this Lightroom previews.lr data folder. Now, what can you do to control the file size? If you are on really tight SSD storage space and you need to control how big this thing can get, let me show you what Adobe's got. So I'm going to go to in on the on Windows, it's Edit, Catalog Settings. On Mac, it's Lightroom Classic Catalog Settings. And now this dialog box comes up. And right now, Lightroom Classic is computing how much storage space is being used in the preview cache for the previews.lr data folder. It's figuring out how much is there and it says 55 gigabytes. And then we have three options here on things that control the file storage space that is being used by the preview cache. You'll notice first off, there's no button to purge the cache entirely. There's, there's just nothing here to be able to do that. And that's because Lightroom really needs them. In order for the library module to function like I just showed you, it needs these previews 
previews and it really wants to have at least the standard preview all the time every time you go into the library module so that it'll be nice and fast it wants to have these all the time that's why there's no purge button but we can delete the folder we can do it safely and i'll show you the impact in just a second now to change it so that it has different storage options you you let's go through these drop downs really quickly the first one here is auto is probably what you have it set it to the numbers may look different on your computer because this is dependent upon the display the resolution of the screen that you are using if you're on a 1080p screen this is going to be a smaller number if you're on a 2k screen like i am here where my resolution is 2560 by 1600 then it's it's suggesting or Lightroom is saying, hey, you need a preview that's this size. If you're on a 4K screen, it's going to be a larger number, a 5K even larger than that. So this is all dependent on the screen size that you have. And this is probably the best setting to set it at. But if you're tight on storage space and you want to control how big this preview cache is, you can choose another option. So for example, on my 2K display, my vertical pixels are actually 1600. So this wouldn't be too bad of a uh, change because I would have at least height wise all of the pixels that I would need and and that's not too bad 1440 I've even tested that and for me and how I use the library module this is plenty fine I, it's plenty of pixels for my standard previews to be able to have it and that's going to be at least half the size of the auto pixels so you can tot you can pick a smaller preview for me on the on my 2k display 1024 is probably too small i would want pixel or i want previews standard previews that are built a little bigger than that so now that that's one choice that you can make to do it another is the preview quality so this is very similar to like the jpeg export quality settings that you've got options on if you've done that you know that like the higher the quality options the bigger the file sizes and that's controlling the compression of the jpeg algorithm and makes it so that it, it if you have it lower quality the file sizes also get to be lower so same thing you can choose high medium or low if you choose uh, a medium is not too bad and if you're really tight on space that might be a choice that you'd want to make is medium and that combination of a smaller pixel size and a smaller preview size is going to dramatically reduce the amount of storage space these previews are going to take in that folder but you should probably test this out you can test it by doing the process i'm going to show you in just a second to delete the folder then go build some previews and use the lightroom the library module in lightroom classic to see how does it look to you the last option here is automatically discarding one-to-one -one previews i showed you how if i zoom in in loop view it took a second to do a loading screen and build the preview you can avoid that and, and well, and now that I've had the preview built, it's gonna stay there. Those previews are really large. They are gonna be one-to-one -one pixel dimensions with the size of your RAW file. So if you're shooting a really high megapixel camera, they're gonna be really, really high uh, file sizes on one-to-one -one previews. They really take up space a lot and they're not really used all that often inside of Lightroom Classic. So a really good choice then for being able to control the file size is to set something like one day. If you are really tight on storage space, you can say, okay, I only want you to keep those one-to-one -one previews that can be really, really big for a single day. And after that, just purge them because I don't really use them that often. The standard previews with the other two settings control, those I use far more frequently. Those are something I see in the library module all the time in the grid view and so on and those you can have stay around a lot longer but we only want to get we only want these one-to-one -one previews for a day i probably am not going to need them anymore those are the settings i'd recommend that you use to be able to control the storage space that is used up by this folder now there's other places where there's cache stuff that is talked about that is not anything to do with this this folder if you want to limit the storage space of the lightroom previews.lr data folder those are the only settings in lightroom classic that pertain to that folder and it's there's just nothing else you can do so if it got out of control if it got to the point like i have where there are 94,677 previews that's for all of the images that i have in my catalog I'm not gonna be going through the library module for all of the images in my catalogs all the time. And if I'm really tight on storage space, 
I, I might just need to get rid of them. So let me show you what happens if you do. Let me show you how it do. So the first step here, and I'm gonna change back to grid view just so that we are prepared for coming back into Lightroom. The first step is you gotta close Lightroom out. So I'm gonna do that. You wanna make sure it's totally shut down and not running anymore. And now I don't wanna delete it. I wanna be able to get back to this. I kinda like, I have plenty of storage. So I, I wanna have all those previews that I've had built. I'm just gonna rename it to dot old right here so that Lightroom can no longer find the folder. It has to uh, it has to be named previews.lrdata and the first part of this can be customizable. So Lightroom may not be the name of your catalog. You may have a custom name here. Whatever the custom name is, you've got the name.lrcat. It's going to look for a custom name space previews.lrdata as the folder name. So since it can't find it, it's going to build it on startup as I do it. So I'm going to relaunch Lightroom now and we're going to see what happens. I want you to notice what's what's going on in the grid view and the film strip view as we relaunch Lightroom to be able to see how these previews are used. And you can see right off the bat, I have like this really dark image right here, right? In film strip, it's all empty and all the other things around it are empty. It's really slow to be able to show the images. Now it's updated and it's changed to where it's showing this at uh, a better exposure. I have images, I have previews that look like the others before. My film strip is finally fully populated, but it took some time to do that. And it's not because Lightroom was launching, it's because the LR, we deleted our previews.lr data folder. If I come back over here, now you can see that I have a brand new Lightroom previews.lr data folder. And if I go inside it, and you can see there's there's a bunch of folders it's created and there's some other files too, but um, it also has 11 items in this folder, but I wanna see all the items throughout all of it. So I'm gonna do a search for the preview files and that's 16 previews it generated as I did this. And it's sorted by size here. So some of them are as big as almost four megabytes in size. Those are the previews that it built as I was using Lightroom. So it's it's populated it. Now what further implications there are is if I scroll down, you can see it, it still lacks the previews that it needs to render anything else in the grid view. They're all gone. Unless I get to the end and I kind of stop and wait and it's it's building the previews and now I have an accurate depiction of the adjustments. So before it updated, it was kind of using just the embedded preview that's inside the raw file. And then it built the, the standard preview for these images and it can then show me what my adjustments look like in Lightroom. And it's kind of the same still down here in the film strip. If I go to the end, because standard previews were built, you can see it. And now it, it because of where I moved and kind of stopped sliding, Lightroom is building these previews and you, you could see that it is updating stuff. If I go, let's go kind of to the middle and stop. It's got some previews and then watch as it updates and kind of gets brighter and shows me all of the adjustments. There we go. See that one got updated. It's just changing it. And if I go, look at my search results again and I redo it, it's 48 previews have been built now. And one of them is 15 megabytes in size as it was building it. So it just depends on what you are doing in Lightroom. And it's and even though I deleted it, Lightroom is building these previews on the fly as we go. So it's not a terrible price you pay to be able to have this work, especially if you have those settings created where you're gonna build like smaller pixel dimensions and lower quality then it, it doesn't take that long for it to do it. But if you want to make sure Lightroom library module is as fast as you can get it, there is something that you can do to be able to rebuild all of the previews that you just kind of threw away, or at least the ones that you want. So I'm gonna to go to library and I'm gonna to go to previews. And here we have options for building standard previews and building one-to-one -one previews. Now though, I don't recommend the one-to-one. -one. They take much longer to build. They take much more file storage and they're just not used that often. And so you don't need to build the one-to-one -one previews. You just need to build the standard preview. So I'm gonna click on that button, and now a new dialog box has opened up, and it says, "Do you, it's asking if we wanna build standard size previews for all the photos or only one. If I choose all, it's gonna build all of them for the folder 
that I'm currently in and the ratings I'm on. So right now there's this rating system down here in the lower right. You can see all, here's the flags, here's the stars, here's the colors. If I, it's only gonna build them for whatever it, the filter is set for. If you don't have any filter applied, then it's gonna build them for all of the images in the folder. If you have a filter applied, it's only gonna build them for the images that fit in the filter, which is just great because I have them filtered down to those that are not rejected. It, the, current settings. So I'm going to do build all. And now you can see up here in the upper left, it's building those previews. It has 222 previews it needs to build. And it's going through. Now this is going really fast because I lowered the pixel dimensions and the quality of the preview. If you have them set higher, it's going to take more time, especially if you have a 4K or 5K display and it's set to auto, it's going to take more time to build all of those previews. But here we have, it doesn't take that long. It's going through, we're almost halfway done already because of the settings I had. And the file size that it's generating for each of these previews is also going to be a lot smaller because I chose the smaller pixel dimensions and I chose a medium on the preview quality. So it jumped there. You could see it just jumped some. And that's because the previews for those images that it got to at that point were already built. And so I, I didn't have to build them anymore. Just my using of Lightroom Classic made it so that those were already built. All right, we're almost done. I almost talked through the whole thing, but uh, we'll see if we can zip this forward. All right, the task is done. It's built all of the standard previews. So now let's see how it is that Lightroom Classic responds. So now if I go in the grid view and I open up, I have all of the previews are there and shown for this shoot because I asked it to build the previews. Same with the film strip. They all show and they go well. And if I go to the loop view, I just hit the E key to go to loop view. I have the images. I can quickly go from image to image. There's not really any loading screens, but if I go to drill in, because I did not build the one-to-one -one previews, I expect it's gonna have to do that. So if I click and, and go in, it looks blurry, it looks blurry, I have a loading sign, loading page, and now it's done. So it built that preview. Now if I come back here to the search results and I refresh, we have 222 previews that are in this cache. One of them is 15 megabytes in size. So that's, that's how it works. That's uh, the impact if you delete the folder you just need to go build a few of the previews if you want them back, but Lightroom's just gonna build them all for you as you use Lightroom in the, the library module too. This has nothing to do with the develop module, it's only in the library module. And now that I have deleted all of those previews, if I go anywhere else, any other folders, it's gonna have the same delay in performance in showing me the thumbnails or the, the images as I'm in grid view or loop view and in the film strip down below. So that's that's how these are used and that's uh, what you can do with this folder. I hope you found this useful. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Stick with me here on the channel. I, I love putting out these kinds of tutorial videos. Also check out my podcast. That's phototacopodcast.com. I, I have monthly tutorials on not only Lightroom technical tips like this, but other technical topics, anything technically related to photography. I try to break it down and make it easy to understand so that you know exactly what's going on and how to improve your photography. Thanks all.